Good evening, boils and ghouls. Today, we will take an intriguing journey through the foggy realms of our beloved genre, where we will discuss two supposedly final chapters of two very different horror franchises, Halloween and Phantasm. This video will focus on why I believe Phantasm's swan song wins out over Halloween's most recent alleged final film. Of course, I speak of the fifth and final installment of the Phantasm series, Phantasm Ravager, a film that, in spite of its obvious budgetary constraints, stands as a more triumphant capstone to its franchise than the recent chapter of the juggernaut that is the Halloween franchise, Halloween Ends. It may seem like an audacious claim, but allow me to take you on a journey, a flight through the silver screen, or silver spheres if you will, a tapestry woven with narratives and nightmares, where fantasy meets reality, and budget is obviously no obstacle to creativity and artistic vision. <laughs> Firstly, let's address the specter in the room, the budget. Phantasm Ravager has the aesthetics of a very low-budget student film. But here's the twist. Isn't that part of its charm? The film doesn't pretend to be anything it's not, and its ambition transcends the boundaries of its own financial limitations, presenting an authentic, raw, and passionate vision. Then again, Aside from perhaps Phantasm 2 or 3, the series has always thrived on a lean budget and creative pragmatism, am I right? Ravager, however, budget constraints aside, really gives you that palpable feeling of a true passion project, a labor of love from director David Hartman and creator Don Coscarelli, which allows it to resonate in a way that Halloween ends, despite its polish and star-studded cast, simply doesn't. Ravager is a conclusion that feels right for the Phantasm franchise, a peculiar dreamlike and perplexing universe where a low budget can still allow for a surreal dreamscape to be imagined on screen, hence still aligning with the offbeat, disorientating charm of the series as a whole. It's an ode to the enduring spirit of indie filmmaking, its narrative resolution Hinged on the emotional investment we've accumulated for the characters over four decades, showcases a depth that was less apparent in Halloween Ends. I mean, sure, one could say that the characters of Halloween Ends were more fleshed out and had better dialogue, but to those people, I would have to ask you this. Why are the characters so abruptly different than they were in the previous two movies? Why do they make such poor decisions that simply do not align with their original characterizations? Why do they speak like they realize their characters in a movie versus their believable exchanges in 2018 and Kills? I don't have an answer for those questions, but don't you dare try and tell me it's been a few years, man. Everyone has gone through so much trauma. The town is just different now. That's a bullshit reasoning and an even more bullshit plot device they chose to throw in there. At least the characters we know and love on display in Ravager still feel like themselves and talk like themselves. And better yet, Ravager still feels like a phantasm movie. Halloween ends, well does not feel like a Halloween movie. And speaking of character investment, Phantasm Ravager gives us the much anticipated character payoff for Reggie, portrayed by the ever compelling Reggie Bannister. His journey, a beautiful, heartfelt and intense exploration of loyalty, friendship and resilience has pretty much been the backbone of the series. We've watched him grow, evolve, struggle, and triumph as a character, making his final stand against the tall man in Ravenger an emotional high point, and his supposed death at the end of the film a much-earned send-off. 
The narrative in Halloween Ends, however, doesn't quite strike the same chord. Take Myers, for example. Michael Myers, the supposed embodiment of pure, unadulterated evil, is less a direct threat and more a secondary background villain, replaced by Corey Cunningham, who is more or less the film's primary antagonist, at least for the majority of the runtime. The heavy-handed emotional threads and dumbed-down character choices that are woven throughout the film connect more to the carnage Corey creates after finding Myers than to Myers himself, causing a disconnect with its own franchise villain, an issue that Phantasm Ravager successfully avoids. Furthermore, the depth of the mythology in Phantasm Ravager surpasses that of Halloween Ends. The exploration of parallel dimensions, the alien nature of the tall man, the mysteries of the sentinel spheres, these elements add a layer of fascination and complexity that Halloween Ends lacks with its more linear and predictable narrative. Phantasm Ravager invites us into a labyrinth of cosmic horror, a feat all the more impressive given its budgetary limitations. While Halloween Ends technically delivers a conclusion to its trilogy, it doesn't quite offer the emotional impact or narrative richness that Phantasm Ravager delivers. The epic final confrontation in Ravager, the poignant exploration of friendship, and the emotional depth the series has been building since 1979 culminates in a finale that resonates deeply with fans. In closing, the underdog triumphs in this tale. The finale of Phantasm, with all its quirkiness, low-budget charm, and depth of narrative, showcases the triumph of creativity, resilience, and passion over pure monetary power. The love letter to the fans that is Phantasm Ravager leaves us feeling satisfied, content, and dare I say it, a touch nostalgic. It's a testament that money cannot buy passion and creativity, a testament to the enduring spirit of independent cinema, and a testament to the horror genre itself. If that isn't a triumphant conclusion, I don't know what is.